Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Mary Slesso stopped the killing of twins in Nigeria. Back in the day, many African communities had a superstitious belief about almost everything they did not understand. It was not the internet era, so they could not search to read up on things. They also did not have access to books. And even if they did, they were not learned in English and other languages that the books were written in. So newborns who were twins, albinos, disfigured or had some other medical differences were considered as taboo and were killed or left in the forest to die all because they looked different from the regular children and no one understood why. Calabar, the capital of the present-day Cross River State in Nigeria, mostly consists of the Efik, Ibibio speaking tribe. In the late 1800 and early 1900, the Efik people of Calabar practiced the killing of twins. They believed that for anyone to have a set of twins, the father of one of the twins must have been an evil spirit, and the mother of the babies had been guilty of a particular sin. And because they were unable to identify which of the babies was the child of the alleged evil spirit, both babies were left to die. They did not believe that the earthly father could own both children. This was just one of the many absurd beliefs of those people at the time. Mary Slezor's Arrival Mary Mitchell Slezor, a Scottish Presbyterian missionary to Nigeria, born on the 2nd of December 1848 and lived till 13th of January 1915, visited Nigeria as a result of David Livingston's encouragement that Christians should visit Africa to share the gospel. David was a well-known missionary of that time. Slezor responded to his call and applied to become a missionary in Calabar, Nigeria. She was accepted and trained for three months before she got on a ship to Africa. When she arrived at Okonyong, Calabar, Nigeria in August 1888, she learned Efik so she could relate with the people. Her understanding of their native language and her boldness helped her gain the trust and acceptance of the locals so she was able to relate with them cordially and spread Christianity. She also promoted women's rights and protected native children. She educated them on a number of things, one of which was the need to let twin children live. In addition to educating the people to stop killing twin children, Slesor went around picking twin babies who had been thrown away to die and took them to the missionary compound where she lived. One of her adopted children was Janie, a female child whose twin brother did not survive the unfair treatment of the era. Slesor was one of the brains behind the establishment of the Hope Widow Training Institute in Calabar, which provided practical vocational training to ethics. This further helped to enlighten them on a number of things. Slesor's impact went beyond Calabar to a town on the far west of Calabar called Arochuku in present-day Abia State, southeastern Nigeria. Calabar and Arochuku shared some customs and the killing of twins was one of them. And as the practice stopped in Calabar, so did it in Arochuku. Besides stopping the killing of twins, Slesso also stopped the practice of feeding criminal suspects with acid beans and boiling oil, which was a poisonous combination. Not only that, she also stopped the burial of servants alongside their master, confronted with doctors and stopped the infliction of other hard punishments. Slesso had no biological child as she was never married. However, she adopted African children who had been abandoned by their parents. She was so loved that she was named the White Queen of Calabar and her house was usually full of orphans she took care of. During her 40 year stay in Calabar, she won many souls for Christ as she spread the gospel to as many as she could. She also established a number of churches. In the last four decades of her life, Slezor's health was terribly affected by malaria. However, she never gave up her mission work. The sickness weakened her so badly that she could no longer walk long distance. This went on till she died on the 13th of January, 1915. She was buried in Calabar. Did you know? Slezor's missionary work in Okonyong earned her the epic nickname Obongawan Okonyong, which means Queen of Okonyong. Slezor refused to wear British clothes and eat imported food as other missionaries did. 
Instead, she lived like the African people she came to serve and they loved her so dearly for it. Mary Slessor currently appears on the front of the £10 Scottish note issued by Clades Bank. The reserve side of the note shows the missionary journey and route of Mary Slessor in Nigeria. A number of projects are named in her honor, some of which are Mary Slessor Road in Calabar, Mary Slessor Roundabout, Mary Slessor Church, status of her carrying twins at various locations in Calabar. A female hostel in the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, is named after her and even in Ghana, a girl's hostel, Slesor House, was named after her in Achimota School, Ghana. What's your take on Mary Slesor as an African missionary? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.